Shadow and I, along with all of you, live on the planet Earth. And the planet Earth rotates around a sun. That sun is one star of what is estimated to be upwards of 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is estimated to be one of two trillion galaxies in our universe. That's a lot of galaxies. But tonight, we're gonna to visit one, a neighboring galaxy of ours, the closest major galaxy to the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, 2.5 million light years from Earth. An amazing galaxy, about 1.5 times the size of our galaxy and roughly twice the number of stars. Let's go check it out. It's Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. Ain't got nobody, but oh, wait a minute. That's not fair. I have a little buddy. I got you, don't I, Shadow? I got you. Yeah, we're going up the canyon. We're going up the canyon to do some astrophotography, aren't we, little buddy? Your, I gotta get your coyote vest on. I gotta keep you safe. There's coyotes out here. There's bobcats. Put your tracker on. I don't wanna lose you. Okay, we're powered up and good to go. We're gonna hike around a little bit. Let Shadow get his energy out of him before I set up. And we've got a few minutes anyway. It's so beautiful out here. Telescopes are often referred to by their diameter of their aperture. This is often referred to as an Orion 70 millimeter quadruplet, meaning the aperture is 70 millimeters across. The aperture is right here. But what we're really saying <laughs> is this telescope is capable of very wide fields of view. And tonight we're going after the Andromeda Galaxy, which is a huge target. And even though it's 2.5 billion light years away, my other two scopes cannot fit the target entirely in their field of view. The Dobsonian can fit about half of the Andromeda Galaxy in its field of view. And my Maxitoff Newtonian, well, pretty much the entire galaxy, but not the ends very well. The quadruplet is an amazing telescope in that there are four lenses that refract and refine the light. So by the time it hits the imaging sensor in this camera, it's come together in such a way that you don't get uh, aberration in the colors uh, or by way of elongation. I've come a long ways in telescope design, but in theory, it's still the same as the Galilean telescope with a lens in the front refracting the light and focusing it down here where the eyepiece would be. The scene conditions are just superb tonight. Looking at the FWHM filter, I'm averaging about 318, 3.18, just beautiful. I have stacked nine images or nine sub frames and I'm going to make some quick adjustments to the histogram and you will see the image pop before your very eyes. There it is. And ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the Andromeda Galaxy. But now, Shadow and I just have to wait. Well, I gotta wait to get some time on this beautiful image. So, 
Wheat nibs. Don't we shadow? My little buddy. My little buddy. You want a nib? There you go. One little nib for you. Would you drop it? You have one more. I don't think nibs are very good for you. Oh, you didn't even like it. You didn't even eat it. You just like chew on them. He just doesn't want to be left out. He doesn't even like nibs. Well, this is coming along beautifully. As I mentioned before, the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years from Earth. And it is estimated that it will collide with the Milky Way galaxy sometime in the future, approximately four and a half billion years from now. But you don't need to worry about that because when galaxies collide, they really kind of just merge together. There's so much distance between all the stars and everything. It's a lot like an atom. There's tremendous distance relative in size between the nucleus and the electrons. And so atoms can pair up and form molecules in the same way a galaxy can come together and as they slowly merge, gravity kind of pulls them in to the same direction. It's a blending is what it is, not a collision. So even though it's four and a half billion years from now, you don't need to worry about it. Our home, the Milky Way, will still be fine. It will just be part of a bigger, more spectacular galaxy. All around these parts, there are legends, myths, tales, stories of skinwalkers. That is a very dark form of magic practiced by a very small uh, part of the uh, indigenous Native American population, predominantly Navajo and Hopi. And I don't want to cast the wrong light on them. It's a teeny part. The majority of them shun it. Uh, but it's been practiced for centuries. And a person is able to, however, I don't know, but transform themselves into that of an animal or take on the image of an animal, like a wolf or a, a mountain lion or something. And it kind of looks part human, part animal, but they get the strengths and characteristics of the animal. And there are those that say they've been driving down a lonely country road, desert road, and had a skinwalker run along the side of the car and keep pace with the car, even when they tried to speed up. They were able to keep pace with the car. And there's all, there's all kinds of stories. I've never seen one myself, but I'm kind of glad I have Shadow around because uh, he lets me know in case something like that ever were to creep up on me while I'm out here in the middle of the desert or up a canyon or on top of a mountain. Yeah, everybody needs a little guard dog. Well, we've got 76 minutes of data I think I've got enough. It's starting to get a little chilly. And I told myself I wouldn't stay out late tonight. I'm gonna to stick to that. It's a beautiful image though. Oh, I'm really gonna be able to do something with that when I process it. All right, we're out of here.